All right, let's get to the final episode of the November previews catalog for things coming out in January, February or so, somewhere around there. Oh yeah, Buzz Color Edition. He's dubbed the Golden Kid, and from that moment on, he's drawn into the world of underground spelling bees, where letters fly like shurikens, and defeat is never an option. His talent is recognized by the mysterious and dashing outlaw King Khan and the suave and plucky black queen Bonnie, and they introduce to him the new challenge of No Holds Bar competitive spelling. Now you got the Snowcat Prince. Siv is a snowcat and the youngest in a family of princes. When his father dies, Siv and his brothers are all in line for the throne. Eager to become kings themselves and wary of how well liked Siv has become by the citizens, Siv's brothers send him on a dangerous quest to find the long lost magical crown that once belonged to their royal ancestor, the Eld King. Legend says that the snow cat that who finds the crown will break the curse on her land and bring great honor to the family. But failure could mark Siv with three black stripes, and he'd be banished forever. Well, I wouldn't save a village that's already ready to banish you. Screw him. <laughs> Uh, we got the littlest fighter. Ash, a novice fighter about the size of a human kid, battling giant monsters across the land, has started to make a big name for himself as he defeats champion after champion, despite his small size. He'll fight anyone, even if it means destroying a, new bu a few buildings or villages along the way. When he stumbles across Dot, a young villager who wants to put an end to the destructive fighting, she urges Ash to put his battling days behind him. But Ash has big battles on the brain. He has his sights set on finding and defeating the legendary champion, an old battler who mysteriously disappeared from the fight scene at the top of his game. Dot and Ash set out to find the legendary champion, and learn about the surprising reason the epic giant doesn't fight anymore. Looks fun and interesting for the youngins. Now I gotta jump about 10, 15 pages here. Two. No. Rest in peace, just a ghoul in love picture book. It's Valentine's Day in the graveyard, and the ghoul has a crush, but he's too shy to talk to her. The Wolfman, Mummy, and Dracula all have advice, however. Is it right for ghoul? What can ghoul do to win Ghoulina's affection? <coughs> Rest in peace, sorry. Just a Ghoul in Love is a humorous and spooky book about navigating the difficulties of first loves and how sometimes the best advice is to just be yourself. You got Rant CPO, Greed is Good. They've been putting out a book a month the way it looks like. Uh, Rant CPU follows the misadventures of Silicon Valley's next big thing. An AI robot created by a hormonal and hyperactive 13-year-old and powered by a mysterious energy source of alien origin. In this new one-shot, Jeff teaches Rant the pains and pitfalls of late-stage capitalism and hustle culture. Through Jeff's Rent-A-Rant, our poor robot gets worked to the bone, or, well, wires. And while Jeff and Vic enjoy the spoils of Rant's hard work, a series, serious issue arises. Rant's alien power source. Can they resist the pitfalls of greed and excess long enough to save Rant? Backup story, Mort Stormberg and Rant. After a drunken night out, Mort stumbles home and crashes into Rant and gives him a history lesson. The, the, 
<laughs> Lost Beauty of the 1960s. Rant has some notes. I don't know. Okay. I, almost, I always wondered when, since I've seen this, are they doing this AI character book and having AI write it for them? I'm curious about that. Even their description is all goofed up. So who knows? They probably had the AI do the description also. Uh, and here we got Looks like Gigante. Number one. Marta and Felix head to the border with the intent of dressing like immigrants in hopes of being hopes of being caught. Their goal is to capture footage for their documentary about immigrant abuse. Things do not go as planned. Okay. And you got a tiny graphic novel. Set in the tradition of the classic tale of Thumbelina. Silverline is proud to present Tiny. In this captivating and engaging original graphic novel, a mother troll discovers our heroine, Tiny, and envisions her as the perfect mate for her awkward troll son. Of course, realizing that Tiny wouldn't come willingly, she kidnaps Tiny from her home in order to fulfill her arranged, fam her arranged marriage for her son. Alone and afraid, Tiny contemplates escaping, but has no idea where she may be, making it much more difficult in order to successfully find her way home. Tiny is forced to endure the many unseen dangers of the foreboding forest as well as the relentless pursuit of the mother troll who demands that she lives happily ever after with her undesirable son, even if she has to hold her captive to do so. And aren't trolls big old giant things? And then you got this tiny little fairy girl. And it's just weird. Weird, man. Weird. Uh, we got something on this page. Yeah, you can try again one shot. Sentimental girl-oriented sci-fi adventure about clones, math, a gigantic fish. And ambition in a future where AI do most everything. This is de the debut long form from webcomic superstar Olivia Walsh. You Will Be Okay, an anti-anxiety pocketbook one-shot that tells you that you'll be okay at least eight times. It's filled with coloring pages, simple thought exercises, advice, and resources to help you get through anxiety attacks. Anxiety attacks can be scary, but whatever happens, you will be okay. I know someone that's been having a lot of anxiety attacks recently that I should pick that up for just for them. Okay, that looks like about it for that page. We got The Crow Dead Time. Uh, set against a rugged backdrop of the late 1860s, Joshua, a man driven by a deep sense of justice, is left for dead by a ruthless band of renegade soldiers. As he lies dying, a mysterious crow appears, whispering a dark promise that time is no barrier to vengeance. Resurrected in the present day, Joshua finds himself... Okay, so this guy died in the 1860s, and now he's resurrected today. And hey, wouldn't his bones and everything be pretty much dissolved away by then? Yeah, I don't know about that. Don't like that concept. Uh, Joshua finds himself in a world he barely recognizes... Yet his mission remains the same, to exact retribution on those who wronged him. And wouldn't they all be dead by now? Are you just killing their great-great-grandchildren? But the faces of his enemies have changed. The soldiers who once betrayed him now ride as a menacing biker gang that bears an uncanny resemblance to, to his old foes. 
with the crow as his guide and the weight of the past fueling his wrath, Joshua embarks on a relentless quest to bring justice to those who thought they had escaped their sins. I don't know, that just that description is just too wrong. It just doesn't make sense. It's basically saying everything happened in the 1860s. So are the bikers immortal too? <laughs> I don't understand. We got the fog, which I I like the movie. I don't know about it being transferred over to a book. Forty years have passed since the malevolent fog rolled through Antonio Bay, claiming lives and leaving a legacy of terror. Now in 2022, the once sleepy fishing village has transformed into a ghost hunting tourist destination, where thrill seekers come to experience the town's haunted past. But something far darker and more sinister is rising from the depths of the sea, far beyond the horrors that once plagued the town. Alright, we got the offspring come out and play. Riley has always been plagued by strange occurrences, things he can't explain to his teachers or family. His home, once nearly consumed by flames, now feels eerily empty of electronics, and Riley finds himself hearing the unspoken thoughts of those around him. Desperate for help, Riley's parents present what seems like a perfect solution, DuPont School for Gifted Children. Riley soon discovers he's not alone in his extraordinary abilities, his new friends share their own bizarre experiences that lead them to DuPont's, or led them to DuPont's, but all reveal the same chilling truth. Their powers have vanished since receiving their collars. As lessons become increasingly harsh and the director reacts to physical punishment, Riley and his friends are pushed to their limit. Well, yeah, duh, if anybody's going to give you a collar and you have superpowers, more than likely the collar is going to negate the powers. So why would you put the power, put the collar on in the first place? It's, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'm such a whiner. I actually like this storyline, Money Shot, so I'll probably end up picking this one up. This is a one shot. Money shot number zero. The sexiest number zero issue ever. Take a th trip through time from the origins of the intrepid triple explorers to a peek at the future. Pat Noswald and Garth Graham join Tim Seeley for the funniest and naughtiest arc of money shot yet. And here's where you get all caught up before diving into the future. Yeah, I, I, I mean, Pat and Oswald joining up with them guys. Why not? I will have to pick that one up. We got... Nope, nope. Looks like Drumming Up an Appetite with Vinnie Paul, cookbook. If you're a fan of Vinnie's. from Pantera. Don't know what kind of... Yeah, they don't give no descriptions of any of the names of any of the foods that he's putting out. Uh, and then we got Growing Up Farley, a Chris Farley story. The family of Chris Farley and Z2 Comics come together to bring you Growing Up Farley, the first ever Chris Farley graphic novel. Chris Farley was a beloved comedy legend with a totally singular style, one that was heavily influenced by his childhood and his relationship with his father. Told in collaboration with his brother, stand-up comedian Kevin, Growing Up Farley is an intimate glimpse into Chris and Kevin's adventures from performances at Red Arrow Camp 
to improv sets at the Arc Theater in Wisconsin, all the way to Second City in Chicago. Growing up, Farley is a heartfelt dry dive into laughter and love. I wouldn't mind checking that one out. But price tag's a little up there, in my opinion, though. I think they should take ten bucks off it, and I'd definitely put it on my list. I guess I will have to wait to see it in a bargain bin. We got Street Fighter Prime number zero, a variety of different covers. Even a top secret cover reveal on release. Huh. Can't quite guess what's up with that cover. The next era of Street Fighter comics begins here. Zane Grief and Marissa make an ominous discovery in Italy. Brothers-in-law Guile and Ken come to blows, and Chun-Li investigates the mysterious organization known as Vortex. Jump into Udon's 2025 comic lineup with this special prelude issue. Yeah, I'll probably pick up the blank sketch cover, maybe. We'll see. We got Little Mega Man, Volume 1. It's a manga by Yuisha Kawada and Yukito. The endless battle between Dr. Willy and Mega Man begins. In this wacky new take on the Blue Bomber's early days, our hero encounters classic robots such as Platform Man, Nostra Man, Damas, Comfy Chair Man, wait, why is Rush a real dog? And is that bad box art, Mega Man? It's all out zany adventures in Little Mega Man. That sounds like it could be fun. Mega Man fans. It looks like we got one page left. Sure, probably just finish it off in two episodes. Oops. Looks like we're going for... Tokyo, Tokyo Alien Brothers. Fuyu Nosaki. Tanaka is a perfectly ordinary college student, except for one thing. He's secretly an alien. He and his brother, Natsutaro, are on a mission to study the people of Earth and evaluate the planet's resources. But adapting to fit in with life on this new world might be a bit harder than they bargained for. It's a hilarious, feel-good sci-fi comedy Follows two alien brothers and the shenanigans they get up to around Tokyo as they discover what it means to be human. And then we got Ruri Dragon. Ruri Eiko Aoki, or Ruri Aoki awakens one morning to find a pair of horns growing from her head. It's already hard enough trying to be a normal high school girl. So how the heck is she going to figure out this crazy dragon stuff? I don't know. You're going to have to check it out. See if I find anything that piques my interest from the toy side of things here. It cracks me up. Lots of different colored dice. All it is is the same old, old dice. Just overdone some new symbols or something. New colorization, and they're still charging a lot of money for that damn dice. <laughs> now you're probably better off just to pick yourself up a 3D printer and print your own dice out. But no snap together stuff. Some Nightmare on Elm Street, Camp Crystal Lake, and isn't this all a little late? Halloween was. Last month, got some muscle cars, matchbox cars. Eh, not seeing nothing too exciting here. What the heck was that? Oh, human organs. <laughs> you got a Bigfoot, five inch figure there. Godzilla, a couple different spawns, 
Cowboy Bebop. Lots of plushies. I don't know what what is up with this one. It's basically a naked figure. Revolution or Rebel Tech. Amazing Yamaguchi Attack on Titan. Aaron Yeager Titan figure. It's like he's naked. <laughs> uh, I don't ding a ling, but he's naked. <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. Got some Care Bear Monsters, some Simpson Pops, Sandman Pops, Brooklyn Nine Nine. <laughs> been off the air for a while. That, that looks like Daryl Dixon more than it looks like someone else. Eh, not seeing an interesting in the pops. The statues don't see anything that really grabs me on there. Yeah. Not too exciting in that section this year, this month either. That's it for the previews catalog for this month. We'll get back with more previews next month. Otherwise, keep following Under the Call of MS. Rate, review, subscribe, tell a friend. We get all kinds of interesting stuff that we've been coming out with. We're getting ready to do some more comic reads and stuff. Now that October is over with... And that pretty much took up all our time with all our postings, just focusing on Halloween type stuff. Check that stuff out. Give us those likes. Sorry, I'm yawning. Burnt out from reading. And we'll get back with these more of these soon. All right. Take care. Bye.